All right, if you're a Proxmox user, you know what I'm talking about. We've got this amazing platform. It's powerful, it's lean, it's packed with features, but there's this one tiny little thing, this number, that causes a frankly ridiculous amount of stress. So yeah, today we're gonna talk about the VM ID and why it's such a massive headache for so many of us. I mean, come on, who here hasn't felt this? This quote is just, it's perfect. It's that universal moment of surrender for every Proxmox admin who's tried and failed to keep their VM list looking pristine. And that's really the heart of the issue, isn't it? Proxmox is genuinely fantastic. You get clustering, live migrations, snapshots, the whole shebang. It just feels right for a home lab or even a small enterprise. But then you have this one little number, the VM ID, that feels like a ghost from a much simpler time, constantly creating this low-level organizational anxiety. Okay, so let's get into the nitty gritty. How does one simple number create so much chaos? Well, it all comes down to how the system was designed and what happens when that design smacks into the messy reality of day-to-day -day use. So what even is the VM ID? At its core, it's dead simple. It's just a number that counts up. Your first VMI is 100, the next is 101, then 102, and on and on. Sounds clean, right? Logical. But theory, theory is one thing. Practice is a whole other beast. And here's exactly how it all falls apart. You start out so clean, right? 100, 101, 102, everything's perfect. But then, you know, you do your job. You spin up a test VM, you tear down a container, and Proxmox, it doesn't backfill that number. Nope. It just keeps on counting, leaving this ugly gap behind. You do that a few dozen times, and pretty soon your list is just a random jumble of numbers that means absolutely nothing. Look, this isn't just about making things look pretty. This has real-world consequences. At first, sure, it's just annoying trying to find a VM in a messy list, but it can get way more serious. If you try to get clever and manually reuse an ID, you could totally confuse your Proxmox backup server, and suddenly your backups are pointing to the wrong machine. And the absolute worst case scenario? Trying to add a new node to a cluster and having ID collisions. That can stop a migration dead in its tracks. And this right here, this is the nightmare. You've got everything set up perfectly on a new node, you're ready to join it to the cluster and expand your empire, and then, bam! Overlapping VMIDs. Conflicts everywhere. It's a critical failure. And like this person says, cleaning up that kind of mess is the opposite of fun. So, all this frustration has a lot of people asking, why? Why are we still doing this? The most common suggestion that pops up is to use GUIDs, globally unique identifiers. So, is this the magic bullet? Could this give us the clean, orderly future we're all dreaming of? When you look at it this way, GUIDs seem like a no-brainer. They are, by definition, unique. No more collisions, no more backup mix-ups, much safer for all our automation scripts. But, and it's a big but, have you ever tried typing a 36-character string from memory on the command line? It's a nightmare. Suddenly, that short, simple, easy-to-remember vmid doesn't sound so terrible after all, does it? But you know, it's not just about what's easier to type. The real barrier here is a technical one. The VM ID is deeply woven into the fabric of Proxmox. It's right there in the storage volume names, the LVM config files. It's everywhere. Ripping it out and replacing it with GUIDs wouldn't just be a patch. It would be a fundamental architectural heart transplant for the whole system. That's a huge undertaking. So since a big change from the Proxmox team probably isn't on the horizon, the community did what clever communities always do. They started hacking the system. This has led to a whole group of people we could call the organizers, folks who've come up with some really smart ways to force this chaotic system into making sense. And check out some of these schemes. It's pretty brilliant, actually. They figure, if we're stuck with a number, let's make that number mean something. Some people will actually encode parts of the IP address into the VM ID. Others have these complex structures for the node, the VLAN, and the IP. A super common one is just reserving big blocks of numbers, like the 1000s are for dev, the 2000s are for prod. It's a way to claw back some sanity. Now, this kind of system is amazing for keeping your sanity if you're managing everything by hand, but it has an Achilles heel. The second you introduce heavy automation, think of a CI-CD pipeline that's constantly spinning up and tearing down dozens of containers, these manual numbering schemes just completely fall apart. They need a level of hands-on control that just doesn't fly in those dynamic worlds. 
And that weakness, that brittleness, has given rise to a completely different school of thought. It's a counter movement, really. These are the folks we can call the Zen masters. And their solution isn't to control the number. It's to just stop caring about it altogether. This quote just says it all, doesn't it? It's simple, it's profound, and honestly, it's probably better for your blood pressure. Instead of fighting a losing battle against the system, you just accept it. And you find better, more modern ways to do your job. Okay, so how do you actually do this? How do you let go? Well, it's all about changing how you look at the interface. First thing, just stop sorting by the ID. Sort by the VM name instead. Start using the tools that are already there for you, like tags and resource pools, to actually organize your stuff. And for the love of all that is holy, if you're scripting, never hard code a VM ID. Always, always fetch it dynamically. You basically start treating the VM ID like an internal database key. It's there, it's important to the system, but you almost never need to see it or touch it directly. This user cuts right to the chase, and they're not wrong. This is the core belief of the Zen master philosophy. A perfectly sorted list of numbers gives you this false sense of organization, but what does it actually do for you? Nothing. Tags, on the other hand, give you real, functional, searchable organization. They're just the better tool for the job. So, we've been through the chaos, the dream of a perfect system, we've met the organizers and the Zen masters. What's the actual takeaway here? When all is said and done, what really matters? It all comes down to this one single thing, the shared annoyance. It's the one thing that connects every single person in the Proxmox community. Whether you're a neat freak with your numbering scheme or a Zen master who's let it all go, you felt this pain. You are not alone. And let's be honest with ourselves for a second. For all of our complaining, the current system, well, it works. The reason it's still around is because it's incredibly fast, it's simple, and it's predictable. And for a huge number of users running smaller setups, that's more than good enough. Those are good qualities you don't just throw away. So, yeah, we could all sit around and wait for Proxmox to release some brand new feature that solves this. But the most powerful solution you can implement right now today isn't a software update. It's a personal one. It's about shifting your own mindset, your own workflow. And that's really the final piece of the puzzle. Just stop worrying about the number. Let it be messy. Let it have gaps. Who cares? Instead, put that energy into what actually matters, the machine itself, the application it's running, the service it provides. Use the great tools Proxmox already gives you, like tags and pools, to manage that. And that kind of leaves us with a final question to think about. In this world of powerful search, tags, and automation, do we even need a perfect human-readable ID system anymore? Or is that just a leftover idea from a time when we treated our servers like pets instead of cattle? Something to chew on.